Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. In this video, I want to share with you six crops that I think will transform your garden forever in a very beneficial way. So the first crop is this beautiful plant in front of me. It's called borage. It's known well for its blue flowers, which are edible. They kind of give you a bit of a cucumber taste, but there is a lot more to this plant. Firstly, it can be used as a green manure. You can sow it and then you can chop it down and it will break down. The other thing that's amazing about it is that it will transform your garden forever because it self seeds prolifically. This wasn't, I didn't plant or sow anything here. This is just self seeded from last year. It's a hardy annual, which means the seeds come back every single year, no matter kind of how cold the winter is. You can also make a really powerful liquid feed or liquid amendment from borage using the leaves and the plant. It is great for a lot of your fruiting crops, such as like tomatoes and your squash and your beans. Now, one thing that you have to understand is that borage is an absolute bee magnet. Both honeybees and bumblebees, there's one that's flying about at the moment. On average, I saw a study that an average borage plant produces around 950 flowers per plant and it can replenish its nectar for each flower every two to five minutes. Incredible. The next crop is not an edible crop, but it's so powerful at helping grow amazing edible crops in the garden. And it comes back year after year. It's easy to propagate. It's comfrey. So this is comfrey that we only put in last year. We've already come through with one cut, about to do another cut of this. The amazing thing about comfrey is that it is one of the most powerful liquid amendments that you can make. On the screen now, I'm just gonna show you a chart in comparison with say manure, just so you can look at the difference and just see how highly nutritious this is because it has a really deep tap root that goes down and it brings all of the nutrients up. So as a chop and drop material, this is great for around all of your perennials to integrate into like a food forest system. The main reason why I have the comfrey here is not just for creating a, a liquid feed, which you can also do a concentrated version of. It takes a little bit longer, but it doesn't smell. But I'm also just going to chop and drop and mulch all of the tomato plants with this as like a slow release of nutrients, but also to protect the surface of the soil. Now in terms of propagation, it's very easy, either by division or by taking root cuttings about five centimetres long and just planting them in the ground and they're going to grow. The final thing that I love about comfrey is that when it does flower, it is also loved by the pollinators. The next plant is nasturtium. This is all nasturtiums, which is self-sown. It's a, another annual, just like borage, which just self-seeds prolifically all over the garden, which makes it much easier. It just grows when it's ready. Um, so the nice thing about nasturtium, you've got the edible leaves, you've got the edible stem, you've got the edible flower, and also the edible green seed pods. They're kind of known as poor man's caper. So the great thing that I love about nasturtium is that it grows really rapidly. It's a great way to cover some bare ground, but then when the flowers come, it's a great way to add a pop of color in the corner of the garden. And the flowers are especially loved by bumblebees. When these are flowering, there's really during a, a nice day, there's never gonna be a time when a bumblebee isn't at least visiting one of the, the flowers. As gardeners, it's really important that we create a nice kind of pest predator balance. And part of that is attracting not just pollinators, but beneficial insects. And one of the best ways to do that is to have flowers in the garden, which is why a lot of these crops also double up as being excellent magnets for bringing those beneficials into the garden to create a nice, healthy environment to hopefully grow better plants and better crops. Another great crop that's gonna change your garden forever is of course, mint. Mint, it's a very kind of prolific grower. It spreads a lot. I get a lot of people saying, don't plant mint because it's going to spread everywhere. So my experience is that it doesn't spread everywhere, but it's actually a unique characteristic of mint that can be used to benefit certain things. So instead of having grass, you could have mint as a cover crop or as kind of the ground layer, say in a food forest. Or if you have, say, a whole bed, you can just plant it with mint to, to keep it contained, but to fill the whole bed up and enjoy it. Mint is so easy to propagate. So you can either get a bit like this, which you just pull off some of the leaves, stick it in water, that's gonna root, it's gonna create a plant. 
or you can just divide it as long as there's a bit of root you can plant it around and one of the things that gets me really excited about mint is that there's so many different varieties to choose from this is moroccan mint particularly good for making a fresh mint tea you also have things like chocolate mint in this garden we're also growing basil mint that is absolutely amazing and like the other crops, the flowers of mint are also particularly good at attracting beneficial insects. And so if you want something that grows quickly, that looks good, that smells good, that can cover a little bit of ground and you can use it for your cooking, then mint is amazing. The next crop is a favourite of many. It's going to be strawberries. I got a nice big strawberry plant here, lots of strawberries appearing, another strawberry plant down there. They're all planted along the outside of this borage border, which we planted last year, and it's just self sown now, so didn't have to sow it at all. We're taking out plants and planting them elsewhere around the garden, but as the borage grows quite tall, it's gonna act as an understory for all of these strawberries. Now, the thing that's lovely about strawberries is that they are a forever crop because they propagate so easily by layers. So they send out layers, which you can then pot up, transplant, very, very simple. The main thing with strawberries as well is that they're a low growing crop. So unlike say currants or raspberries where you need to make quite sophisticated net structures to protect them from birds, with strawberries you can do something that's much lower, it requires less effort, less netting, and they just taste so, so good. And even if you just dedicated a single bed or border to strawberries, or you could be a little bit clever and underplant them around currant bushes, which is what we're planning to do, you can get a lot of food, a lot of delicious food in a small space. The next crop is coriander, also known as cilantro, which is what I've got growing here. Such a beautiful plant, really nice, delicate flowers. The lovely thing though, is that these flowers are really nice at attracting those beneficial insects and pollinators. You can eat the flowers, you can eat the leaves, you can eat the stem if you want to. My favorite thing is that in here, there's, they've just started producing these little green seeds, green coriander seeds, are such a lovely delicacy. Kind of nice to like kind of mash up into butter to create a nice fresh coriander butter, or you can just let them seed. Now the, the way that I use coriander in the garden is I actually celebrate it when it bolts or when it runs to seed, because I kind of see it as a nice edible ornamental to add little splashes of delicate white around the garden. But then in order for it to just self seed, so it always stays, is you just wanna allow a few of the plants to just naturally run their course for the seeds to turn brown. They'll then just drop to the floor and the following spring, they will re-sprout both inside and outside. Then you can transplant these and move them about your garden. But I just love it. It looks, it looks stunning, it smells really nice, it is super productive and it is really gonna change your garden a lot. So earlier in the video, I mentioned comfrey. Comfrey is one of 11 natural mulches that I highly recommend for permaculture growing. Recently made a video right here, which you can find out all about those 11 to help you grow really nice crops and improve the health of your soil.